Good afternoon, everyone. We'll be getting started with our program in just a couple of moments. And if you're just joining us, uh, we will be getting underway in just a couple of moments. We're just going to give everyone uh, a few more moments to get in place and then we'll be starting the program. We're really excited to be talking with you about the International Festival of Arts and Ideas. Great. Well, thank you everyone for joining us for our special presentation this afternoon. As you know, the Fe International Festival of Arts and Ideas is back. It's been going on virtually for quite some time, and now we're ready for live events. And so we want to get everyone involved. I was uh, down on the green yesterday. You can see uh, all the setup is, is wrapping up and we're ready for a really exciting Arts and Ideas Festival. We have a lot to preview for you today. And so we want to get right into it. It's going to be a really fun, interactive Zoom. Now, you might not be able to always say that about Zoom, but I think we've uh, gone out of our way, especially a big thanks to the festival for bringing a lot of neat features to today's program. And so we're really excited to share those with you and excited to share the excitement that we have here in New Haven to be back together and be back with the festival. So let me get things started. Uh, I should first tell you, my name is Garrett Sheehan and I'm the president and CEO of the Greater New Haven Chamber of Commerce and Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce. We are all about supporting New Haven and the festival is such an integral part of New Haven. So I wanna start us off by welcoming in Olive Tiger. She is coming to our virtual stage today. She's based in New Haven and Olive features an unusual collection of instrumentation from Olive, from cello, guitar, vocals, Jesse Newman, violin, synths and electronics, and John McGrath, drums and percussion. In 2016, the group released their debut full length record, Until My Body Breaks, pulling thoughtfully from artists like Andrew Bird, St. Vincent, Tune Yards, and Angel Olson. Olive Tiger has garnered growing attention for its work. In January 2017, the band was named Emerging Artist of the Month by the Delhi Magazine and received a 2017 nomination for Best in State during the New England Music Awards. Olive Tiger was also honored with a 2018 Artist Excellence Fellowship Award from the Connecticut Office of the Arts. And I've been told that they have their next album coming out in just a very shortly and it's softest eyes. So look forward to being able to listen to that and get that. And without further ado, let me welcome Olive Tiger. Thank you, Garrett. Um, so I, I'm so excited to be here. Thanks all for, for having me. Um, I'm gonna play it tune that uh, Garrett mentioned from our first record, the title track called um, Until My Body Breaks. And later on in the program, I'll, I'll play the song that our uh, upcoming release, which will be released uh, next month and will be called uh, Softest Eyes, Side A, uh, the song that the title, title is pulled from later on in the program. But um, can everyone hear me all right? Oh, my love, I cannot see your face, but I will love you until my body breaks. Though you roam as free as birds and snakes, I will love you until my body breaks. Watch the sea. Calling out your name, so I will love you until my body breaks. Ooh. Ooh. Rising high. 
from the dust of days I will love you until my body breaks though we go through many earths and quakes I will love you until my body breaks when the world turns and back so away I will love you until my body breaks. Thank you so much. That was really wonderful and uh, excited to hear from more from you today and also at the festival. Thanks. Thank you. So it's my pleasure now to welcome in Shelly Keela. And Shelly, if you have not met her, she is the new executive director of the International Festival of Arts and Ideas. And Shelly, we're so excited to have you here in New Haven with us now running the festival. Uh, such a special year. It just feels like things are coming together when you see the festival coming back. And especially this year, after we weren't able to be together in person and now to have the festival back on the green, it's just awesome and great to have you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Garrett. It's really a pleasure to be here. Um, I, yeah, I am new to the festival, newish. I started in August of 2020, so it's been about 11 months now. And um, I came, I come from Minneapolis most recently. I'm a Midwestern born girl. I was uh, born and raised outside of Milwaukee and I spent my formative years in arts administration and, and my secondary, my post-secondary education in the Twin Cities. So Minneapolis, which is, you know, is not unlike New Haven, I would say in the sense that, it, not in every sense, but in the sense that there is a rich um, artistic community. There's a lot of creativity. There's a lot of entrepreneurship. Um, those, those things that are present in Minneapolis are present here. And so it's been a real joy to be able to move and, and keep those things that I really valued so much in my time when I was in the Twin Cities. So um, what I've encountered in New Haven, I live downtown, I work downtown, um, but I've been to all the neighborhoods and parks around the city as well as in greater New Haven. It's just, you know, a real hunger this last year to get reconnected. And in this, over this last year, I think what I've learned and what I've seen others learn is how much we really need each other. Um, you know, we need each other from a, an emotional place and from a personal and communal place, and also in terms of our livelihoods. And I think that that, you know, this community knows that like no other. And the festival is thrilled to be able, we were thrilled to be able to do it last year virtually um, in terms of our partnering with restaurants and being able to host ideas talks. And we're really excited to be able to be more present this year. Um, so you'll see more um, activity downtown, you'll see more activity online, you'll see more partnerships, and we'll talk about that later. Um, but there's still more dreaming we have to do. So speaking of dreaming, um, the theme this year is imagine. And uh, imagine is really an invitation. It's an invitation into um, thinking about creating what, what does our world look like after coming out of a global pandemic, coming out of this, you know, incredibly um, reflective time, as well as a time with great racial strife, where we've had a change in leadership in the White House, um, what's next? And we really believe that, that that's that what's next is something we want to inspire people with. And, and gosh, you're going to hear from someone that's super inspirational in just a second here. Um, and also that you're going to, that we want to invite um, our community to, to dream with us in that way. So 
Um, Malachi Eason is my colleague and uh, He's, a, he's an East Coaster originally, he'll tell you his quick story, um, but he has been visioning um, through the theme of Imagine with colleagues and with community what this festival could look like. And he's gonna take us through that. So over to you, um, Malachi Eason, Director of Programming. Everybody, I like to put this on gallery so I can see the faces. It's good to see everybody. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with you guys and to chat a little bit, about, chat a little bit about what we got going on here at the festival and share a little information about me. Uh, so I'll start off with that. So my name is Malachi Eason. Um, I'm originally born and raised in Boston, Massachusetts, and lived in several different places. I went to undergrad at the University of Bridgeport, so I'm pretty familiar with Connecticut. Um, New Haven has always been a place where I would run down to to just get away from Bridgeport and it's always been great to me. So it was so good to be back to New Haven and be full circle um, in my career. So I'm excited to be here to talk with you guys. So today's presentation, we're just gonna go over some things, um, of, um, some things that we've been doing as a festival and also some of the things that, that's happening throughout the festival coming up, uh, which starts this, Friday, tomorrow, tomorrow. Um, so I want to ask my really good colleague. He's already on it. Look at him. Amazing. His name is Clifford. He's behind the board helping us out, making sure our, our um, PowerPoint is on point. So yeah, so as you can see, look at this wonderful image right here. Um, the lady with the with the jellyfish on her head. Uh, so it it was really good coming up with the theme this year for the festival, which is the year of Imagine, as Shelley touched upon earlier. When thinking about planning for this festival, uh, Shelley and I both were new to the festival. So it went to a lot of research of what the other themes of the year look like, of other years look like. And we just started thinking about where we was in 2020 and how everybody was really like expecting for 2020 to be the year of like growth, the year of change. Um, I remember growing up watching uh, the Jetsons thinking that 2020 I'll be having a flying car. So all these wonderful things um, just going, going through our minds and our conversations. And we just came up with the year of Imagine, imagining what our, our future looks like, imagining what our present looks like, and also imagining what art looks like. And so as we was thinking, we wanted to think about new things to offer to the green, new things to offer to, to the community. And sometimes we forget that there is art all around us. And here was the first thing that came to my mind. And so thinking about how we can incorporate new art on the green. And here is definitely one of our premier um, segments that we're having, which, are ha which is happening on June the 19th on our green. Um, and we're having two parts to that. So we're having a hair show, which is happening uh, that evening at five. And then we're also having a conversation at 1 p.m. online on our website, streaming from our website with different community leaders, people who have, um, we have some advocates for here. We have some uh, beauty um, experts that will be there talking, having conversations about why hair is an art, the history with art um, here, and also how they connect hair to community. So that's gonna be one of the big things that we do, but we can go ahead and move on. I do wanna make sure that I share with you guys that the, one, the wonderful thing about the festival is uh, majority of our programming this year is completely free and open to the public and that only 1% of our programming is paid and that came through um, our tours and the different things we do in the community, which we'll talk about later on in the presentation. Um, but it's pretty cool to see that a festival of this magnitude is giving back to the community in that way. And I'm happy to be a part of something that's allowing people to really um, take a full experience after not being able to touch, feel, be around people um, throughout the entire 2020. Uh, prior to the festival starting on the 18th tomorrow, uh, we have, we've been having neighborhood festivals and we focused on Dixwell, we focused on West Rock, The Hill, uh, New Harville, uh, and each festival was completely different and beneficial to that community and also to our community as a whole. Um, we were able to connect with different community artists and also give each neighborhood their own identity through programming. Uh, and we always look at the neighborhood festivals as 
a lead in to the festival. So you're here, some people say, oh, the festival starts on June the 18th. Um, in reality, the festival started the first week or the second week in May, where we started our neighborhood festivals and our ideas conversation. So I wanted to share that with you because I feel like sometimes we forget about those things. And this is more, this is as important as anything else we're doing. So um, along with the neighborhood festivals, we have our food events that take that take part um, all throughout the city of um, New Haven and Greater New Haven, our partners that we have that curate different events and show different varieties of foods. Um, and what we've been doing is cooking classes, interactive panels, discussions. And what's really cool about our food events is that we're able to partner while we're also programming. So you may see some advertisement talking about our gospel brunch that's happening on Sunday at 3 p.m. on the green. Yes, I'm doing plugs. And we are partnering with uh, a local restaurant to provide the food for that brunch. So not only are we um, giving people opportunities to experience food virtually and physically, um, we are also partnering with businesses and giving them more business. So it has been great. I can talk forever, but I'll make sure that it's not just me. So I'm going to pass it over to Shelly to give a little information about some of the things we have coming up from our tours, storytelling, and some of our ideas in Big Read. Thanks, Malachi. So you won't be able to see me because I'm off video right now, but I can talk. You can hear my voice. Can you hear my voice? Okay, right on. Okay. Um, thank you. So uh, yeah, in addition to getting to know the green and the artists of the region and the country and the world, um, we want folks that come through the festival to get to know New Haven. And one way um, to do this is through food events. Another way is through tours. Um, we have a great uh, curator who has been uh, doing a lots of work to put together some exciting tours. Some things that have happened already are a virtual um, augmented reality tour of the public art on buildings in downtown New Haven. And we, I actually went on this one with my kids. We got to go with our cell phone, download an app, and it would animate public art all around downtown New Haven. This is someone who set up their own business and we partnered with them to do that, uh, to do that experience, to have that experience. He was, on the, he was on the tour with us and was able to talk about it. Um, we're also doing some collaborations with um, canoe tours. Uh, we have some paddleboard yoga coming up. There are lots of bike tours. And actually the, the Juneteenth bike tour with Mr. Michael Twitty was the first thing to sell out at the festival. So uh, there are a number of different bike tours happening. There's a walking tour of Westville. And again, it's a chance for folks to get to know experiences that they might want to um, do on their own after the festival and also just to get to know the neighborhoods. Cliff, can you advance the, to the next one? Do you want me to talk about this, Malachi? Or are you going to talk about this one? Okay. Um, another way that we want to get people uh, connected to New Haven is through the storytelling work, the work of, of storytelling events. And uh, we had storytellers last year. It was part of the Dinner Story series. So storytellers were invited to collaborate with um, restaurants and chefs and, and tell a story while people were eating their, their dinners that were part of their festival package experience. This year, we have some independent story events and including a story slam. So if you haven't experienced this before, it's gonna be really cool. It's gonna be on the green and uh, we have some hosts lined up and uh, some storytellers. Um, we're gonna ask the audience to vote on the best story. Like this is basically like, you know, American Idol or the, you know, um, America's Got Talent. You know, those moments where you vote for your favorite artist. It's happening on the New Haven Green during Story Slam. You can you can be a part of selecting the grand master or the grand storyteller of the festival. So encourage you to come down for that. We also have an open mic night event. So if you are a storyteller or a poet and you want to, or you know storytellers or poets in your lives, and you want to invite them down, they can take their rightful place right on the New Haven Green and center stage and be a part of that experience. This, so uh, is this me too, Malachi? Okay, uh, ideas <laughs> events. I wanna make sure I'm speaking when I'm supposed to speak. Um, the I, the ideas... The ideas events um, are all happening online this year. This was something that we were able to really flip to very easily last year. 
and uh, and and offer all of these experiences virtually. And because we were able to reach so many more people, we decided to keep doing it. And we have some exciting ones that have happened. So we had Joy Harjo. She's a fantastic uh, poet, po the uh, U.S. Poet Laureate. Her book was the Big Read book this year. And uh, we had a chance to connect with her virtually. Uh, but upcoming, we have um, Koshi Regan, who you see pictured in the lower part of the screen, um, who has created the piece, The Parable of the Sower, based on Octavia Butler's work. This is a an amazing science fiction oriented piece of theater that is being performed specifically in college campuses or college um, communities all over because a lot of college students are reading this book. Toshi Regan is gonna be speaking with us um, about black futures. And uh, you also see Hanifa Washington and, and Walida and Marisha will be part of that conversation. Um, we have Alicia Garza, who is the founder of the Black Lives Matter movement nationally and now internationally that will be in conversation with us through the ideas panel. We did a panel the other day about imagining a 15 minute city. So if you were to design a city where you can get anywhere in 15 minutes, which feels like New Haven to me, I feel like New Haven did this, um, what would that look like? Uh, and then, you know, you're seeing some other examples here of uh, amplifying Asian voices. This is an initiative by the, the Yale China Institute. And um, they came to us and wanted to talk about, you know, what was going on in the Asian American community nationally in terms of the, some of the reactions that they've been, that folks have been experiencing due to COVID. So there's lots of room for creativity. Um, you'll see a lot of things happening in the idea series this year, and there's an opportunity for that to grow as well as we move forward. So um, I'm saying that as an invitation to you all. Uh, I mentioned the big read and the next slide, I, yeah, just talks about this. So this is a program that the festival has been doing in partnership with the library, um, with the New Haven Free Public Library. And we continued that this year. So we were able to purchase and distribute 4,000 um, books and, and also uh, to create programming that included the author included Joy Harjo and also included other writers, indigenous writers of Connecticut and, and other connections to, to native and indigenous wisdom throughout the spring. And um, much of that programming, it's culminating now. I think we have one more event that's coming up, but really it's been a great idea to get a national light on the fact that New Haven is focused on literacy, that there's a lot going on with our uh, free public library system and that we we're excited to connect to other authors right in our community when we do this event. Back to you, Malachi. Okay, I think that we may have a special guest here um, with the hand raised that we maybe can just take a quick minute to honor. Um, our good friend from Zinc, I believe his name is Michael, is here. And we wanted to take a quick break for you guys to be able to take part in something extremely special um, with our partners at Zinc. And he's gonna give you a demonstration of a signature drink that we have going on at the festival. So real quick, I want to introduce our really, really good friend, Michael from Zinc. Hey, Michael. Hello, how is everybody today? Can you guys hear me? Are we good? Yeah. All right. So uh, my name is Michael Egan, and I'm the general manager at Zinc in downtown New Haven. And we are going to be providing the cocktail for this year's festival, as we have before in the past. Uh, thank you, Shelly, and thank you to all of the board of the Arts and Ideas for always including us. This is just a real great honor for us to be involved in this every year. So this year's cocktail is going to be a lavender bee's knees. Bee's knees cocktail is a classic. It is honey, gin, normally a little bit of lemon, kind of all shaken, very summery. Think of margarita with a little bit more gin and a little bit more lemon and a little bit less lime. Uh, in this case, we are going to be using a couple of our favorite local ingredients, uh, Bar Hill Gin. Not on camera. What? Not on camera. Not on camera. There you go. No, all right. Okay. So this year we're going to be using uh, Bar Hill Gin, which comes to us from Vermont. All gin has to have at least one botanical in it, uh, juniper. The most of your gins will have, you know, between seven and, and 25 different botanicals, everything from orange peel to grapefruit to lemon zest. Uh, the nice thing about Bar Hill is that they started out just as an apiary. So their primary uh, botanicals are only honey and juniper. 
So you think that this is gonna be sweet, but it's not because it's a beautiful floral juniper with the tiny little hint of sweetness from the honey. Uh, the other uh, ingredient that we're gonna be using in the lavender business is a lavender liqueur from our friends uh, at, in West Hartford Distillers. Their company is called Wild Mood Flavor Company and they actually make a lavender liqueur and it is really, really beautiful. It is a little overpowering though, so we're gonna go a little gentle on that. We're just gonna use it really more for aromatics than anything. So first off, we're gonna take a little bit of fresh ice in our shaker. And we're gonna take two ounces of our local Bar Hill gin into the shaker over ice. We're gonna take a little bit of the lavender uh, liqueur. And again, this is, Wow, it just smells phenomenal. It smells like fresh lavender that you just picked if you have lavender in your garden. But it is a little overpowering. So we're just gonna use about a quarter of an ounce in the cocktail, just a little bit, just to kind of give it that lift from the botanicals of the juniper. We're gonna use fresh lemon juice, always fresh. Don't use a concentrate. Don't use something that's been sitting in your refrigerator for a little while. Always use fresh lemon lime juice fresh juices whenever you can. It's really important. It makes the quality and ingredient, the quality of the cocktail turn out so much better. We're gonna use about an ounce and a half of fresh lemon. Now, we have taken a uh, local honey from Wing Dance Apiary, which is in Cheshire, and they make a honey called Fat Bee Honey. You can find it in some of your local grocers. I know that they just started being distributed in Big Y. Big shout out to Elizabeth Charlelli uh, and Bill Hespath uh, from Wing Dance Apiary. But we've taken their honey and we've just kind of diluted it with a little bit of hot water. Um, somebody asked me a really great, great question at the bee dinner the other day. Why don't you just use straight honey and pour that into the drink? Is it not sweet enough? Well, yes, it is actually sweet enough. But the problem is if you just were to use the straight raw honey into the cocktail because of the thickness and the viscosity, you're going to run into the point where you're ready to make the cocktail and the honey doesn't really integrate into the drink very well. So we use about three quarters of, uh, of honey and then a little bit of hot, hot water, like hot boiling water. And we just kind of stir them together until you get this really beautiful honey simple syrup for lack of a better word. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit more fresh ice, put it into our cocktail glass that we're getting ready to put it into. Give this a nice good shake. Count to about 20 in your head. That's what I generally do. And then just give it a little professional bartender's tap. That's a little bit just kind of drips out. If you're a professional, you know exactly how to do that. Sean is filming. He is our first professional bartender here at Zinc. And then we're just going to strain it over a fresh glass of ice because we want to kind of strain out some of those little pieces that have kind of chipped in your cocktail along the way. And what you're left with is a really clean, smooth drink that is beautiful based with this Bar Hill honey scented just a small amount with the beautiful botanicals of lavender, juniper, and honey, and you're left with a really refreshing drink that is equally balanced with the alcohol, the sugar from the honey, a little bit of the botanicals from the lavender, and this really great burst of fresh lemon. I honestly cannot think of a better cocktail to have in the summer, springtime here in New England, especially using the Vermont and the Connecticut and the Connecticut ingredients. And again, here at Zinc Restaurant, we are not just about the local ingredients and our food and cuisine, which we've been known for for over 22 years now, but we also try and keep the local ingredients involved in our cocktail program and wine program whenever we can as well. Um, I just wanna say thank you again to Shelly and all of you at the Arts and Ideas Festival. We look forward to pouring this cocktail for you guys this Friday. Thank you again. Uh, thank you, Michael. Michael, that was really good. I was so interested. I'm so excited to come down there on Friday and try it. I know it's going to be good. It looks so good. So thank you again for that. That was wonderful. Cheers. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. So, um, so we're just going to continue on. And I promise you, we won't be before you long. We're going to make it on through so we can ask some questions. That's the best part of our presentation. Questions. All right. So actually, can we um, can we go on to the to the next slide, my friend? That would be great. Cool. 
So this is a very exciting event for us, which is uh, our dance series. We have some wonderful acts a part of this, but featured in this picture right here is a glimpse of the Tony Award winning choreographer Ronald K. Brown. Um, and he will be premiering his uh, brand new piece with us here in New Haven, which is a special treat because nobody has seen it yet. So it's gonna be us first, which is really, really cool. And it's called Equality of Night and Day. And so I'm extremely excited to present um, Ronald K. Brown on our stage and he's gonna be something that you don't wanna miss. And he's happening on the 20th. So he is on the evening on Sunday. So look into that. Um, and you guys, we have some wonderful um, music artists that we will be bringing to our stage. Uh, we have Lincoln, um, the Jazz Lincoln, uh, Jazz on Lincoln Center, sorry, from New York. That's going to be their opening day. Uh, we have uh, a documentary that will be shown. And that documentary is uh, led by some of our local artists. You can see their names there. And they're performing that song that they created during that um, documentary, which talks about the effects of COVID on local artists who perform majority of, of their lives in before the COVID hit and how COVID affected them. Um, so the song in the documentary is extremely good and you guys really do not wanna miss that. Um, and we also have other things that you may not always see at a festival. So we have a component of theater and you'd be able to enjoy some of the classics like Romeo and Juliet. Um, you have some, some showcases from Long War Theater and uh, Madeline Sayette will be there as well. Um, we're going to be showcasing her piece called Where We Belong on, on through streaming, through our streaming platform on our website. So that's something to see where time starts. And you don't want to miss that because she did something extremely special for us and recorded a complete show for our company. That's going to be extremely fun. Um, and before I stop talking, which I love to talk, I really, really do. Um, <laughs> we want to make sure we bring attention to our visual arts and how we communicate with people and how we communicate with different organizations to show art in our community. Um, so we have different partners that are around the city to offer different public arts installations. Um, you can see on your right hand side, um, we have a window mural that you that showcases what's going on here in the city. And then we also have on the right hand side, one of the um, partnerships that we made with um, Ming Thompson from the Arts Council um, that, we, that we partnership with the city of New Haven and the Arts Council um, to create the, the diary disc. And these discs were placed throughout different cities in uh, different port um, sectors in New Haven and allow people to um, respond to the prompts that are on those discs. So I hope, and you can imagine somebody saying, I hope for a change, or I hope for, for um, the community to come together. And with those discs, you can be able to come, you can come to the green and see those discs all together now that was collected from different neighborhoods on our green to show a public display of art and unity. Um, so we're gonna move on just to share a little bit of the details about what's going on with our um, productions this year, and then we'll, be able to have some conversation. All right, thanks Malachi. So uh, this year, like no other, has required some very intense planning and, uh, and, and preparation. And the festival was in the thick of that as we were trying to figure out you know, what it would look like for us to show up if we were able to show up in person at all with our community. So I'm not gonna go through this whole, all these boxes, but this is to give you a sense of the kind of um, work we went through as a company or as an organization to prepare for um, being on the green. Just a few highlights is we did engage an external COVID consultant company from LA. They're called Safe Set LA, um, uh, run by a woman who has been consulting with movie sets and on TV shows to make sure that everyone was safe while things were happening during the time of COVID. So she's been working with our team to create a really comprehensive set of protocols. We have some uh, procedures up on our website for our audience. Our staff also has a separate set of procedures. Our artists are going through testing. Uh, we're really focusing on safety. And even though we're at a time now where things are starting to roll back, 
when you come down to the green, um, you, what you'll experience is actually something that, that is a very uh, safety centered experience. We're not just inviting everyone to come down and, and experience it um, as they would have in the past. We're asking people to pre-register. We're asking people to share their email or their phone number so that we can connect with them if we have to do any contact tracing. I'm hopeful we won't. Um, we're gonna have temperature checks. We will have ushers out on the green and seating people in pods. So it's a different fest. It's a different festival experience outdoors. It's still free, but it's COVID compliant and it's COVID safe. And that's been a really important part of our work this year. Um, the, last, uh, the last slide we have to share is just a reminder that you've heard some of these kind of things pop up throughout the presentation. So Zinc talked, Michael from Zinc talked about the signature cocktail that they've created. We also have a couple of other businesses in downtown uh, New Haven who have created cocktails uh, in honor of the festival that, that the festival has promoted. I personally am buying coffee every day um, from a nearby, from Willoughby's who has a, a festival of Mocha Reimagined. It's very good. And, uh, and those are, that's, hop, that's popping up around town. Um, we have certainly been hiring catering companies as we go back to the green. We're doing lots of cross promotion on digital. We are doing some um, discounting with our partners. We certainly have some sponsorship that's in place, which is uh, a cash donation from businesses to the festival experience. And then those um, businesses are invited to partake in our VIP or hospitality lounge to welcome folks from the stage, to have their logo featured on um, signage, to have special shout outs in um, scripts that that's ongoing and it's very highlighted at this time. And, um, and then, you know, there are other things that we're, that we're dabbling in or that we're working on exploring that might come to fruition in this, in this year or maybe in next year, um, like joint receptions or events that, uh, that could happen between businesses in the New Haven area and the festival. As I mentioned to Tamika earlier today when we were chatting that really anything's possible. The creative, we're really, creativity is, it brings lots of great ideas and we love that at the festival. The sooner that we hear from folks about ways they wanna work with us, the sooner that we can plan and make that vision a reality. So when are we gonna start thinking about festival 2022? Uh, as soon as festival 2021 closes, it's never too soon. So if you have any you know, great ideas about ways that you'd wanna work with the festival, um, bring people down to the green, get your, your word out about your, uh, your business, then the time to have that conversation is as soon as you're ready to. We want to have those conversations now. So thank you. And um, I think Malachi, we're going to hear one more from Olive, right? And then, and then over to questions. Yes, you are so right. So with that being said, I want to present my really, really good friend who is uh, I've met within the last few months. <laughs> um, go ahead and uh, put your minds and ears to the screen for the wonderful Olive Tiger. If she's there, there she is. <laughs> Hello again. Set me all your secrets. I set you my open ears. Lift me up from the everyday rhythms. The everyday rhythms. Wait into the waves 
stereo. Da, 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 da. This is my sanctuary and we are the choir. This is my sanctuary and we are the choir. That was great, excellent, and uh, you know we're we're we've had a great presentation, Malachi. Uh, great sharing so much about the festival uh, with us, and while we still have Olive on here too, we just want to open up for questions. I know Shelley's uh, rejoining us as well, so if you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, Olive, maybe since we we have you on here, I'll, I'll just ask you, what, what is it about the the festival? Why do you, you like uh, being able to participate in it? And what about New Haven? Oh man, well, I think, I mean, one of the things that I love about New Haven in general is that um, it's it's so vibrant and so diverse. There's so many different voices and different perspectives that are present in New Haven. Um, Yale, of course, brings a, a lot to the table and, um, and also our, our local community is just so talented. And um, so I, I love all of the different um, things that I get to experience through um, not only events that I'm not even able to make it to, but even just like looking through the festival programming and like checking out stuff that, you know, that I want to get to, but I can't or whatever, you know, and then of course the ones that I can get to, it's just always a good experience. The, the programs are always such high quality. And, um, and so I, I'm just so stoked that, um, that we get to work together again this year. That's awesome. And I'll, can you just let everyone know when they can hear you and then also the album that's coming out? Sure, yeah. Um, so I'll be performing as, as part of the um, Imagine Singers group uh, tomorrow night on the crane. Um, I believe it st starts at seven. Um, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and so I'll be performing um, that song that you just heard with, uh, with my full band. Um, so it'll be amplified by um, found sounds that, that we've turned into beats and, uh, and our drummer. So, uh, so synths and drummer and, and, um, and along with uh, performing the Imagine song. So, uh, so that'll be uh, the next, the very next time, but we're also playing up at um, Best Video in Hamden. Uh, for a full set on uh, July 17th. Then uh, our, so that that song um, is from the, uh, the EP Softest Eyes Side A, which is the first installment of the Softest Eyes album, which we're breaking up and releasing as three EPs uh, over the course of the next year. And so uh, the first one, Side A, will be out um, next month. And uh, yeah, so, uh, 
the previous album, the title track of which you heard earlier, um, is available on Spotify, um, iTunes, all the all the places online that one listens to music commonly, and um, and you'll yeah you'll be able to hear uh, you'll be able to hear the other one soon, the official official version. Which oh my goodness, I, I can't wait to share it. It's uh, uh, just like makes me cry. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Well, I hope everyone comes out to see you uh, tomorrow evening and then I definitely uh, get the album uh, as it's out there. And, and thank you so much for being on with us today. We really appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me. And Shelly, let me uh, turn to you. Um, you know, I know uh, you moved here this past year. Maybe just, you know, tell us a little bit why, why New Haven for you? What, what was it that really attracted you to come here? Um, I, you know, I didn't, New Haven wasn't necessarily on my list of, of I didn't have a list of places I was going to live someday. <laughs> I've been someone who's really followed the work. And, um, you know, so what, what piqued my interest, what got me looking at New Haven was the festival, to be honest, like that, the, the work the festival has done, the reputation it has, um, the ethos of how it, you know, connects to the city, connects to the national and international presenting scene. That was really interesting to me. And then I met New Haven and I fell in love. And uh, I, I can't, I'm so grateful that this is the city. I can't imagine the festival happening in any other city. And why, why have I fallen in love? I would say, yes, all the things that Olive said about just the, the ecosystems, I'll say ecosystems, because there's an art ecosystem, there's a business ecosystem, they're, you know, they all enter, there's a university ecosystem and they all kind of intersect. They're incredibly complex and rich. And so that sparks a lot of creativity. And I also have found that, you know, the folks in New Haven that I've met anyway, um, which is a lot of people, they really care about what's happening here. They care, they're, they're globally minded, they're globally connected, they're savvy, they're, you know, they're, they're, they know what's going on and, and their hearts are about what's happening down the street and across the street. And like that really resonates with me. And so, and I see it, I see it in the way the chamber works too, just like bringing people together and being about service. And that, um, so that's why I've fallen in love with the city. And now you're stuck with me for a while, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're very, very glad to. Um, you know, we've had some conversations and, I, and you had that slide up about how businesses can get more engaged what do you think, what's the kind of vision of, of how we can make this festival, it's already great, but make it even better, make it so incorporated in the city that people are like, hey, I've got to go to New Haven in June because the festival, it's not just on the green, it's everywhere, it's really encompassing and everyone's engaged in it. Yeah, I mean, so I, I'd love to hear what Malachi thinks about this too, but I'll say from my perspective, um, I think the answer is creativity. And, you know, no one has a lock on creativity. People who work at arts organizations are not the owners of it. It's in all of us. And so when we start thinking about, I think there's an opportunity for us to connect to theme. And that's what we were seeing some of our business partners doing. So when you, you know, when Malachi and his team starts coming up with a theme, what's the theme next year? What's it going to be when it, it should be expansive. It should be an invitation every year. And so when you think about Imagine, what is it about Imagine that connects with my business and how can I make, how can I draw that? And, you know, inviting in that creativity um, so that we can all celebrate, we're celebrating this city, we're celebrating this community and creatives are everywhere. And, you know, so I think that's the way is to really tap into our, tap into our creativity, connect with theme and, and make it a citywide celebration every year and more than a citywide celebration, right? But I see um, lots of folks coming into New Haven that haven't been here before, that people returning every year to experience, you know, what this city has going on every year. And also, you know, what about going out? What if we had tours that were happening that were taking people, for, if we were launching artistic careers nationally and internationally? What if we were launching business brands in our idea series? That could be really cool. And, you know, and I think that's the vision that the founders had was not just to bring in, but also to launch out. So, um, so I think there's nothing but possibility. What uh, do you think, awesome. Malachi? Malachi? Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Uh, that's one of my favorite questions. And Shelly, you said all the things. So all that I can do <laughs> is elaborate from it. Um, it's, she, she said it on the point, you have to be creative and be able to take risk, right? Um, 
when it comes to being in the festival environment, and if you're thinking about how you grow a festival, how you get the festival outside of your four walls, it's being creative, taking risks, and being able to partnership with people in the community. Because when you get the people in the community to buy into what it is that you're doing, you're able to take those people and then be, they'll be your best friends, they'll be your, your marketing team, they'll post it on their pages, and that's how you get it um, outside of the four walls. But for me, as a programmer, as a curator, as a visionary when it comes down to it, art, you know, it's about being creative and not just being creative with that creativity, doing research and seeing what helps your community. So for me, before I even started this, uh, this journey of programming, I couldn't do anything without knowing who I'm serving. So with me knowing who I'm serving, that means I'm out having, having like uh, lunches or like breakfast that I could do where social distance and that at that time. Um, and then a whole bunch of Zooms, I was Zoomed out, but the Zooms were necessary for me to understand what's needed in our community and how, how I can push the community to think outside the box. So for me, that's what it is for sure. Oh, that's great. And, you know, I know there was a question about, you know, business, how could you get involved right now? And I think, you know, Malachi, what you're talking about, you know, even at this late date, uh, any business can really just start promoting the Arts and Ideas Festival and use the hashtags, get on social media. That's going to bring people who go to it to your restaurant, to your business afterwards, you know, maybe book a music act. And so now you're tying back in. So, um, you know, the opportunities are really endless, even right now, to be a part of the festival. I agree with you. I think that's a really good idea. Um, that's That really sounds like once again, like I said earlier, like the city really giving in and buying into the festival and making it theirs. Because one thing that we're making sure that the narrative that doesn't come with the festival is that this is not our festival. This is not Shelly's festival. And I can say that. And this is not my festival. <laughs> this is a community festival. And so we don't run it. We assist with it. The community is what runs the festival. So they could take initiative, it's their festival. They can promote, it's your festival. You can put on events around the festival, it's your festival. And that's what creates the community and the connection and the growth. That was good, Gary, I like that. Oh, awesome, awesome. Well, you know, we're gonna keep having these conversations about how we continue to grow uh, the festival, how we engage more of the business community. And uh, Malachi and Shelly, maybe I'll let you leave us with just kind of the information for folks so they can get out there, they can be involved, they can be engaged with the festival. So uh, the, of course I'm driving you to the website, um, artidea.org is where you can get all the information. And there are, there, there's a lot, it's gonna start out with programming information, but there's also sponsorship or um, partnership information as a, as a navigational um, button at the top. So to your point about how, do, what do I do now? How do I engage now? Absolutely, we have staff that is ready to talk to people about ways that businesses can be engaged tomorrow and ways they can be engaged in four months and ways they can be engaged in a year. So, you know, please do reach out, artidea.org. Again, I'm gonna put that in the chat. Um, the full schedule is up there. That is the place to get the information. Awesome. And then follow us on social. We have so many things happening on social. You might get excited about an idea about you, what you can do with your business. On, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter. It's Art Idea, um, and we're on Facebook. Great. No, we love it. We're so excited to see the festival back. It's been back for a while, but now it's uh, really in person back. Um, so it's going to be a great, great next couple of weeks as we enjoy all the special things that come along with the International Festival of Arts and Ideas. So. Malachi, Shelley, everyone, Olive, everyone who's uh, pitched into this, thank you so much. This was a fun day. And if you're listening to this on the recording, you can still get out there. As Shelley was saying, go to the website, see what uh, the different events are. It's not just coming up on uh, tomorrow. It's the, all these activities that are continuing to go on. So thanks again, everyone. And we really appreciate it. And we're going to get out there and celebrate the arts and ideas. Thanks, Garrett. Thanks, Chamber. This was great. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>